So the last section that we're going to read is about the Songhai Empire. The West African Empire of Ghana grew rich and powerful, but then began to fade away. Then Mali became the richest and most powerful West African Empire, but Mali too began to shrink after the death of the great Mansa Musa, and soon it too was replaced by a new empire, the Songhai. Ghana was known for salt and gold, and Mali was known for its great Islamic kings, but Songhai became known for its size. It grew and grew until it covered much of the land that had belonged to both Ghana and Mali. Its cities were filled with great mosques, strong-walled palaces and mansions, famous universities and busy marketplaces where salt, iron, ivory, gold dust and food were traded. Songhai's best-known city, Timbuktu, had 80,000 inhabitants and almost 200 schools. The medieval traveller Leo Africanus explored the land of the Songhai and wrote about his adventures. Leo was a Muslim, born in the Spanish kingdom of Granada when it was under Muslim rule. When Leo was seven, Ferdinand and Isabella conquered Granada and added it to their Christian kingdom. Most of Granada's Muslims left the country. Leo's parents took him to North Africa to live. When he grew up, Leo decided to travel from North Africa down through the Sahara Desert into the kingdom of the Songhai. The trip through the desert was a harsh one. Leo wrote, Many who travel this desert die because they cannot find water. Their carcasses lie around on the sand, scorched by the sun's heat. Others become so thirsty that they kill their camels and squeeze water out of the camel intestines and drink it. Sometimes this keeps them alive until they can find a pool or well of water. Leo Africanus made it through the Sahara Desert without having to drink water from a camel's insides. Once he arrived in the Songhai, Songhai Empire, he travelled from city to city, finally arriving at Timbuktu. Here is how he described this great West African city in his book History and Descriptions of Africa and the notable things contained therein. The houses are made out of clay with thatch roof, but the temple and the king's palace at the centre of the city are built of stone. The city is filled with wells of sweet water and there's much grain and many animals so the inhabitants eat milk and butter. There's not much fruit, but there are melons, cucumbers, bread, meat, excellent pumpkins and a huge quantity of rice. But there's not much salt, because it has to be carried here from a mine 500 miles away. All of the women wear veils on their faces except for the slave women. Many of the men are very rich, and the king himself has tremendous amounts of gold. I saw one gold bar belonging to the city that weighed almost a thousand pounds. The king often leads his armies into war, but only against his enemies and those who refuse to pay him tribute. In battle, he and his soldiers ride on horses that they buy from the Arabs. Their servants ride on camels. Both the horsemen and the foot soldiers shoot poisoned arrows at their enemies. But the king also honours learning and books greatly. Timbuktu is full of doctors, priests, judges and scholars, and the king pays salaries to learned men so they can study and teach. Books are the most valuable possession of all. They sell for more money than any kind of goods. The people are gentle and cheerful. Every night there is singing and dancing in the streets. The people stroll continuously through the city at night, playing musical instruments. When Leo Africanus published his book in 1526, more Europeans found out about the kingdoms of West Africa. The continent was not so dark anymore. Europeans were startled to find out that great cities and empires existed south of the Sahara. Eventually, the Songhai Empire was destroyed by invaders who wanted to seize the salt and gold mines of the Songhai for their own. The Sultan of Morocco, in northern Africa, sent an army of 3,000 men across the desert. These Moroccan soldiers had cannons and guns, and the Songhai warriors had only spears and bows. They couldn't resist the stronger weapons of the Moroccans. The Moroccan army seized the salt mines in the north of the empire, but the Songhai refused to tell them where the gold mines lay. Finally, after more than ten years of fighting, the Sultan of Morocco gave up on trying to find the gold mines. But the war had already torn the Songhai kingdom apart. The largest West African empire of the Middle Ages had come to an end. So before we move on to today's activity, I'd like you to think about what Leo Africanus would have found so impressive about Timbuktu 
when he arrived there? What do you think the things he would have been amazed at as he walked into the city would have been? You can go back to that description he had in his book if you want to listen to him again. <laughs>